afternoon. How you doing, everybody? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, um, yeah, in the middle of that, my strap came off, and it's a bummer in the summer or any other time of the year. So uh, let's see. We got, uh, oh, yeah, Robin, smoking Pismo Beach set. Hey, that was, <laughs> and, and <laughs> that was the end of the second set and uh, thank you very much but uh, personally I was pooped out oh man I was pooped out uh, the first set was over the top and it was really nice to play with that band again my good friends Gary Roy and Daryl they've done a, a lot together probably played together oh, 25 years So yes, that uh, Steve is at impressions. Yes, it is, and uh, we're going to do um, some things on the Dorian mode. That was our um, understanding the modes. That was our uh, <clears throat> on sale lesson group this week, and uh, so we're going to do a couple things from that. Impressions is 
the perfect tune to play it to. Also, the song So What, which is basically Impressions is the impression of So What, I guess. And so we're going to do that uh, some other time. Gail Severson's here. Hi, Gail. And Wes is here working the, working the buttons. There he is, working the hey, buttons. Buddy. There. Yeah, yeah, I was like, why are you playing like that <laughs> with your guitar? Like, I was doing a John Stoll. Right. I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, there's, I was going to go back there and put the strap back on the guitar <laughs> while you were going, but yeah, yeah, thought that was a bad idea. <laughs> Hope to, was the volume, the balance okay on that? I don't know. It sounds good from what I heard. Hey, Tom Johnson, what's happening, man? Are you all done with the JGI course now? And did it make a difference? I hope it did. Buzz Roberts, a new student of mine, morning from Santa Cruz. Thanks, Buzz, for dropping in. What, you don't like my speed knobs? Now, remember I had, I, I, I didn't change them uh, because I had a uh, pickup cover that was this creamy color like that. And then I, a pick guard cover that was close to that creamy white. <laughs> what a gaudy look, huh? <laughs> I don't know. It makes it kind of stand out a little bit. I like it, too. I, I, I think it's kind of cool. I don't uh, know. I think, yeah, I think he might have been complimenting that. You're, you'll have to clarify that, Robert. Oh, yeah. Do you, was, do you like the speed knobs or, or yeah. no? What, which is it? Um, so Andrew, Andrew, how you doing? Good morning, Andrew. Um, that was Andrew's, um, um, 575 with the cloud inlays that, uh, we're going to be getting again. Looks and sound great. Thank you, Steve. It's a quick question on your fingering. You don't seem to stretch your pinky much and solo on at most four frets at a time. That's true. The, my, I don't have a big span anymore. I don't use my pinky too much anymore. And I wish I would have uh, not used it so much in the past, to be quite honest, um, because I think you got more dexterity using the three fingers right here. So I've been advocating that to new students to, hey, you know, don't worry too much about developing that pinky so much. Work on developing these three. So anyway, and slurring things. So let's go down our list and see what's going on here in the world of Guitar College. Do 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 do. Um, so yeah. Um, Yeah, so we we I was gonna bring it in here. I forgot to get it. The Eastman with the the single pickup. God darn it, that guitar is beautiful. It's gonna bring it in here. But anyway, um, I picked up this thing right back here. There, that's the LaSalle, the the uh, uh, Samic LaSalle. And we've done some interesting things with it. I got it playing really nice, and it sounds pretty dang good. And, you know, I've been looking for some more affordable things, options for people, because, you know, it's so dang expensive. But um, there's nothing like having the guitar of your dreams. But um, in the meantime, it might be kind of cool to have something else. And we just got this in this morning actually this is a stromberg reissue can you see that there wes now i remember when these were reissued a guy bought the name and uh, he had contacted me this is maybe 10 or 15 years ago about his guitars and uh, i had uh, bought a few and i passed them on this particular one I just got, it's like freaking brand new. Um, and the deal is with these guitars, they're made in China, but he puts all American parts on it. Now, as far as pots and pickup, and I got it, I'm gonna take this off and check out this pickup. But 
The guitar is in beautiful shape and 16 inch. It's like two and a half inch uh, body depth. And I guess we ought to plug it in, check it out. But we will down the road. <laughs> That's funny. Do you guys remember Soupy Sales? It's like the door opens and then somebody brings something in. Thank you, honey. This is that. Look at that. Gorgeous guitar. This is the uh, Eastman 803 with a set pickup. And uh, check out the flame on the back. Okay, this is all solid woods. And that's a beautiful, beautiful axe. And it, it sounds really nice as well. Actually, why don't I plug it in, Wes? Do you want to? Yeah, here, let me help you out here. Okay, go. Wes, uh, Wes, I, I need help, help, help. All right, let me. Um, I might as well just go through the gamut on these just for fun. Um, so this guitar, I got it set up with my special gauge. Um, these knobs have been replaced. I uh, had a couple fret ends that were kind of poking out. Um, but it's in gorgeous shape. So it's like, golly, what do you want, man? <laughs> what let me tune it up one more time so we have the 803 as a single pickup and as a dual pickup dual pickup I think I showed you last week is in sunburst um, let me see if I can play this song. You know, by the way, it's St. Patrick's Day, right? Today, and uh, where's your Irish uh, whiskey, or at least Irish coffee? Oh, oh it's it's in here. <laughs> look at that! Look at that foam. Yeah, we got Irish uh, whiskey, Irish coffee, Irish cream. We got it all here. Let's see if we can play this song. page <laughs> God. hey cut let me do that again all right here's Danny boy Ooh. Thank you. 
There you go. Yeah, definitely better the second time there. <laughs> well, you know, I had the wrong page. I went on to page three instead of page two. Anyway, it's a great tune, isn't it? Ted Green's version of that. You should check it out. It's spectacular. Okay. Uh, wow, Tunia, I, I thought you were starting to play Wicked Game. Hmm. I didn't wear green. You know, I've got green underwear on. <laughs> they haven't been washed in a long time. Um, anyway, what do you think about Eastman AR480? Oh, yeah, that's the new one. I haven't seen one up close, so I have no opinion. The rock and roll is bleeding through Jimmy Page stance was Cool. Uh, okay, what are you referring to? The rock and roll. When you drop your strap, is your memory that bad? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh, let's see. Chord melody. Thank you, Anne. How's the action on those jazz boxes? I get the action so I can play them. If I can play them, anybody can play them. So uh, I think I think the action is really good. Uh, Ted Green was unbelievable. Yes, the mug is green. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us. So anyway, um, what else? Uh, we were talking about the LaSalle. The Stromberger, this guy, uh, what? The Stromberger? Yeah, Stromberger, yeah. Um, I'm in the mood for a Stromberger <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Modes set is on sale, yes. Resources for camp. Yeah, you know what, for the camp, we've also got the PDS. We're working on the band in the box files. So you've got MP3s as well as the band in the box files. And then I hope to do some videos. Uh, so those will be upcoming videos. So we had that gig at Puffers and uh, we mentioned that before and how cool that was. Tip jar reminder, if you like Wes doing all these angles and dangles, please send a tip because I ain't paying. I'm not for that, him messing around back there. It just seems. Well, my, my amazing jokes and comments. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you got any news for us later? Yeah, I do have a, a few, uh, few stories today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, One that's cool. really funny, too. Oh, good. I, I love. All right. Um, okay, I gotta switch guitars, you know. One of the reasons why I don't use these guitars for videos, they have no fret markers that you can see the frets. Just so you see how that works. So I've got to, um, I, I never use those. But anyway, isn't this a cool sounding guitar?
keep this. Man, this thing is sweet. All right. Anyway, that was a little tangent on my part. Thank you. Let me switch back guitars. Uh, I see the Rat Pack. What do, what do people what do what do you mean by that? Was that a Sinatra tune that you just played? Well, it's a Gershwin. But it, I know he did it. You know, I hear you play something and then want to go and learn everything, which is hard to do all at once. You're so right. Just learn little bits and pieces at a time. Then you put it all together. And what do you got? Sealy, bobbly, do or something. All right, Dorian mode. Uh, hold on, Maddie A here had a question for you. Uh, let's see, what does it say? Oh, I just got a Epiphone Regency. What do you think of those? Um, I think is he talking about a Epiphone Regent? I I, I don't know. Um, I'm sure they're pretty good. Um, how much did you pay for it? I, I you know. I mean, I think, it, yeah, everything that I'm seeing here on Reverb is that it's like an emperor regent. Oh, they yeah, that's that regency. that would be more like it. Uh, yeah. Which, yeah. I was just looking at this one. What's up with this uh, tailpiece right here? Well, you know, the longer the string is, the more flexible the string becomes. So, I don't know, it makes those low... Uh, low strings, more flexible, less tension, and the higher one, more tension. So, hope you know, the theory I think is, is that you get less of a ping out of the top than you, because it's closer than you would out of the bottom. Mm. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it works or not, but I do know the fact that the longer the tailpiece is, the more distance between the bridge and the tailpiece the more flexible the string feels. It's a cool headstock. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's cool, man. Yeah, that's nice, nice. You know, it's kind of funny because, you know, Samick right here, they they make guitars for everybody, like Peerless. I, I'm not even so sure that Peerless is Peerless and, and not a part of Samick. I don't know. Samick makes guitars for everybody. And... Um, I don't know how they do it so cheaply. Um, well, actually, I do know one shortcut they take, and that is on, let's see, on this, on this guitar, if you can look right here, you see, a, traditionally a neck is one giant piece of wood, right? Like a, let's, let's call it a, a four by six, and they whittle out of that this piece of wood. Well, here they take a smaller piece of wood and so they attach this onto here. And then this right here, the headstock, it, this is attached on here. So this piece of wood right here might only be this, but then they attach this here. So it, it's very strong and they call this like a luthier joint or something. The neck is very strong. Okay, but it might not have the resonance that a one-piece neck would have. So, labor in China is cheaper than materials, probably. So, that's one of the reasons they can do it so cheap. Also, on your, uh, they, they got the system down as far as doing the plywood. And, you know, and, and I, I, I don't know how they do it. But they do it, and it's so dang cheap. It's crazy. I think I've told my story before, but I will tell it again. Uh, Loudon, uh, I know a guy that uh, worked or owned Loudon Guitars or does or did. or Anyway, he said, Rich, I can get five necks made from a guy in Ireland. They cost me 60 bucks. However, there's this girl in Japan. She'll do... 
12 necks for five bucks. That's, that's the difference. Crazy, stupid difference. Okay. Uh, Maddie A was back here, said that he heard that the, I'm guessing his Epiphone was made at the Peerless factory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. True. And so, then uh, also a comment here from Rod Payne. Uh, really enjoy your program. He found his old Gibson and got excited all over again. You can lose a lot in 50 years, but with your help, I'm trying to get my groove back. Thanks for being there. What kind of uh, what kind of Gibson is it? Yeah, that's what we want to know. Yeah, it must be old. Yeah, really. Um, Maddie A said, yeah, that's what I meant, whatever that was for. Keep track of that stuff, Wes, would you please? Oh, he was just, because he had said it was a Regency, but it was oh. actually a Regent. I see, okay. Yeah. I love that tune. I love Joe Pass's version. Okay, um, what we were going to do is we were going to take a look at the Dorian mode as far as positions. Now, I think this is very interesting. You know, if you, we had that on sale, so you should go get it and explore it. It's it's really uh, important. There's two ways to look at modes. Number one, as the parent, where does the mode come from? The parent major scale. In other words, if I interpret D minor as the two chord, okay, and I play C major scale, I get the Dorian mode, the Dorian sound, okay. So, like on impressions, um, um, you know, the uh, if I just play a C scale, it sounds great. Now, at some point, you do want to study the modes, just because now it expands that scale, okay, the major scale. Now, in the Dorian, D Dorian, okay, basically everything has got five shapes, right? The five shapes to it is the cage system, C A G E D, right? So a Dorian in the C position, <clears throat> D Dorian would look like this. Now I. I'm playing from D to D, and I'm adding, adding here. But it's just like a C scale, like, like an A-shaped C scale. But since it's, now it's a C-shaped D, so it's kind of uh, could be a little confusing. Okay, C A. Next one's A. So here's a, a D chord, E minor. Whoop. Now, as soon as I go up here, I'm in a new position. So we're just going to keep it here. See the slurred picking? Oh, crap. Okay, there's that shape so I should work on doing this going up on one down on the other next is C A G so here's a G chord like of the D you know D shape here it is here So now I've got and now E shape. Okay, and now 
the last one, D shape. So here's a D chord. So I would go, here's the root. So now I could go up on one, down on the next. It's all C scale, right? Or D Dorian. So you want to be able to connect your shapes like that. <clears throat> it looks like a lot of work, doesn't it? <laughs> so, you know, Gail has heard me practice over the last 51 years. <laughs> Remember this, honey? <laughs> You know, that was an exercise I worked on for a long time. And she's heard the Dorian Mode exercises. <laughs> Me practicing all those things all the time. And what really does play the guitar? Is it your fingers or your brain? It's both. But sometimes finger memory is just crazy. And it'll just remember it. And you're almost better off not even thinking about anything. But then that's bad too, because once you start getting into improv, you want to learn how to think and keep thinking as you improv. So learn those, the shapes of the Dorian mode, even though you're also learning the same time, the shapes of the C major scale, D Dorian or C major scale. Were you going to give us a example from impressions? Or was, was that not a thing? No, I, I, I can do that. Yeah, yes. let's do that. All right, so Impressions has two chords. It's got D minor, D minor 9, D minor 11, whatever. And then it goes to E flat. So it's got 16 bars of, of D minor. Then here's D minor. D minor. Sixteen bars of that. Now eight bars of E flat minor. Then another eight of D minor. And then it starts all over again. So. Starts over again. So here's a C scale. See that C scale? Now here's D Dorian, they sound the same. Here's D flat scale. Back to D minor. So, um, now in the, the reason you want to learn the D Dorian, right, is obviously to play, you know. But if you say to yourself, okay, well, D Dorian is actually C major. So, all of the chords in the arpeggios of the chords in C major sound very cool against D minor. So now I'm just going to play the chords of the key of C and of the key of D flat. 
I'll play the arpeggios. So first we have C, and then D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, uh, B minor seven flat five, and back to C. So. Let me start it over because I don't know where I am. Here's a C major. Here's D minor. Here's E minor. F major. G7. Now, now I'm in D flat. D flat major 7. Okay, how about uh, back to C? E minor, G7. F. D, E minor, F minor. Minor seven flat five sounds good. Bada boom, bada bing, boom, boom, boom. Anyway, so that's a really fun tune. I know the tempo's bright, but you can get the. Uh, I think in the lesson. Uh, yeah. All right. What? Any other questions? Yeah. There. Yeah. There's definitely questions. Uh. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um. On the road again. Uh. You actually asked this in a comment. I meant to 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 respond to it. Uh. How many Eastmans do you have in your personal collection besides the John Paisano? You know, I used to have quite a few. And, uh, but I don't, I thinned them all out. I only have the John Paisano. And I would actually like to get rid of that. <laughs> door. Uh, I don't know, because they make, the new ones are so stellar now. Mine was a kind of a prototype. Uh, <clears throat> but John signed it personally, so I can't get rid of it. I don't use them because, two reasons. One is they have no fret markers, so I can't use them for lessons. I've had fret markers made on them, and then I end up uh, selling them. Uh, I had a 605, which reminds me. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that guitar in a second. Um, but yeah, that's it. I don't know. Um, Sklogzy1, who I think his name's Andre. Uh, 25 viewers could be hitting the thumbs up button. That's very true. So hit the thumbs up button. Oh, yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Kim asks, is it common for bass players to use these modes? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. 
uh, because, you know, <clears throat> a D minor walking a... You listen to the bass player on there, he's walking all over just on uh, a D minor using the modes. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, you... Let's see. What did uh, Gail, Rich's typical students over 50, played in the high school, college, then gave it up for a family career, want to get back into it now? Yes, that is our typical student. Um, Kit, uh, sorry, Ann asks, uh, when Im improvising, one should emphasize the target notes of D minor, but really play C major, or do you think D minor? Uh, that's a good question. So I was trying to illustrate, don't even think D minor, think, think uh, E minor, think F major 7, think G7, all of the chords that are in the key of, of G. So you key of C. So in other words, if if it's you want to switch your thinking, uh, so as you're going along, think like A minor. Uh, so let me yell out some chords as we're doing this. Maybe that'll help. A minor. E minor. F. Major 7. G7, A flat 7, B minor 7, A minor, F, E minor. Major seven. Uh, A flat nine. G, G nine or B minor seven flat five. D minor. So anyway. That's that. That's what she can do. Uh, yeah. So she says, "Were you improvising diatonically with the C major scale?" Yeah, you can do that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's so much fun, that tune, man. And that's like one of those tunes that, you know, a lot of college students like, you know, because you get to wink around on your guitar a lot, you know, and just kind of make a lot of music. <laughs> uh, Buzz, I... Buzz Roberts asks, what would Pat Martino do? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I don't know. He would go outside over the chords, you know what I mean? So, um, I don't know what he would do. But he would play a lot of notes. I don't know, maybe I could reasonably facsimile something. Yeah, try it. Pat Martino, you know, he would find some other chords. So, uh, let, let's go. Let's go with this premise. Here's D minor. The five chord of D minor is A. So in other words, we're in Dorian, but now we're going to play 
an A7, so it's going to make it sound more like A harmonic minor, D harmonic minor. Except, or, or, or the jazz scale. But now let's go B flat minor seven. Let's let's hear what some of those notes would sound like. We're just confusing things now because uh, let me relate a story to you. I was uh, doing a camp, at, and uh, I just got done doing this presentation on learning your major scale or something and playing. And this guy's, you know, he's going to try to impress everybody. Well, wouldn't you be using the jazz scale, the mold, you know, all that stuff? And, you know, and it, it, it was like, I know for a fact you cannot even barely play a major scale and you're talking about doing this other stuff. So why, why, don't even bring that up. If you can't even do this, why would you even consider that? You know what I'm saying? So you've got to do things in order and steps. If so, anyway, so I don't know why I brought that up. Pat Martina. hear that in there though that like kind of those just an added weird notes out of the kind of out of the blue yeah sounds cool yeah yeah um but again probably need to know what you're doing first <laughs> <laughs> yeah what the hell yeah <laughs> well, i mean i could probably do, <laughs> do that if, yeah because i don't know what i'm doing yeah that's good yeah well uh, anyway so Moving on here, we got uh, some other questions here. Rod asked, uh, is there a certain distance you prefer between your pickups and your strings? Um, that's a good question. I just kind of adjust it to where I feel it sounds good. Uh, this is actually, you know, I, I think it was like 3 sixteenths is the recommended thing and 1 sixteenth back here. I, I don't know. But I... I always like the treble side a little closer to the string than the bass. Um, when you get it too low, um, I don't know, it just loses something. You get it too high, it's it's too much like an electric guitar. So it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to turn the knob. You know, turn the screw and try to find it. Find the spot that sounds the best to you. Probably first exaggerate everything. Put it as close as you can get it. And then as far away as you can get it, and then you can really hear the difference. Maybe we ought to do a video on that sometime less. And then try to finagle something in between. So don't don't be afraid to turn the turn the uh, screws. Put the screws to it. Yeah, we we have to do a couple pickup videos. So maybe we could do all those in the one, like putting the washers, lifting the pickup cover off the thing, and then maybe we could do a pickup adjustment video. Mm -hmm. We need to get back in the shop and do stuff. Yes. Back in the saddle. So here's a great question. Do you think Peerlesses are comparable to Eastman? And what is your preference, Rich? So my preference is to Eastman. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, the finish, you see the finish on, on an Eastman... Um, this is a lacquer finish and it's shot on there and it's, it's dried chem, uh, not chemically, but it's, uh, dried and they put several coats and it's thin, it's thin, it breathes a little bit, it breathes. This kind of finishing is, is poly, um, I forget the name Polyurethane? Of it. Yeah, polyurethane. And it dries chemically. 
So it goes on beautiful. It's nice and shiny. It's gorgeous. But it seals the top. It seals it. Okay, it won't ever sound any better 10 years from now or 20 years from now than it does now. And sometimes those crack. I mean, lacquer cracks. It all cracks. But um, so the, that's one of the reasons. Also, Pierre Eastman, Eastman uh, does a lot of hand carved, a lot of solid wood. They, um, you know, they're not as much a production, a production uh, guitar as Peerless, okay, and uh, or Samick, whatever. So I prefer that. Now, one thing I do like about these guitars is I think they have the dimensions good. One of the things about the Eastman is most of their guitars are one and three quarter inch nut width. And to me, it's great for finger style. I love it for finger style, but for single note, it's not that hot to me. It's not so much, and I, and I threaten to do this, is just to take and put the distance of a one and 11 16th nut on a one and three quarter inch, you know, spacing. So you could do that if you really wanted to. So thought about doing that. It's like if you ever played a one and five eighths guitar, I mean that that's what my old um, L five was, and I've had another. I had a um, had a sixty eight three thirty five that was the same thing, and uh, I really liked it. I it, it seemed very fast, I, but you know it's a little tight down here. But who plays down here? Are you gonna, you know, are you gonna get your, get your jazz guitar so you can play D chords and B sevens, you know, down here? We're going out to the country, ga da da da. That's how folk singers play the blues. Where are we at, Wes? You want to do some news or? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go go over to that reverb site. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Uh, I think that was it. Hold on. Pat Ann says the morning workout is excellent material for working on scales, modes, and arpeggios. Thank you, Patrick Evans. And then that see that read that Buzz Roberts comment, the last one. I have a Tele Elite that is very weak on the treble side of the neck pickup even with the pickup as high as possible well you might you might want to change pickups you know just get another pickup and see what happens um, you know what I, I don't know if they make a telly pickup you put a strap pickup on there anyways but you know the uh, or get a stacked humbucker on there you know, the, uh, there's a company on eBay. They're called Dragonfire, and they make very inexpensive quality pickups. I'm, I'm just knocked out by them. I should have bought all their pickups, all of them, and, uh, because they're, they're really, really nice. Um, they're on eBay? Yeah, check out on eBay. eBay. They have their own site. Oh, I'm sure they do, yeah. Dragonfire. Pickups, yeah, they got tons of them, and and they make some hot pickups, man. So uh, I don't know. I'd check out the pickup. Yeah, a bunch of telly setups. Mm-hmm. True Texas telly pickup. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'd try that. Which guitar you recommend under a thousand bucks? Well, I, I've got a few of them, I've, the, the, this and this. Um, I've got, I was so impressed with this, I should play this for him. Yeah. Um, because I, I ended up getting two more. And we'll see if how their consistency is. Eastman's, I've had a lot of Eastman's 
and uh, they're pretty consistent, it's, but they are susceptible to humidity and the way people take care of them. And uh, so when I get them, sometimes they're like, oh man, or they're really bitching. <laughs> That's a nice sound, man. So this is their L5 copy, and we just did a video on this, and that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, it's the LaSalle, and um, one thing I think about this guitar before you go buy an L5 without really doing it, you ought to pick up something like this because they're a big ass guitar. It's wide here and it's wide here so when you ask what's a good guitar under a thousand bucks number one you have to decide do you want 17 inch do you want 16 inch and how thick do you want it okay so then you go for the tone so dimensions first tone second and then action third because the action nowadays the action can be adjusted you know they make these guitars and, and they put the frets on with machines and everything's done, you know, with a, with a machine, you know, and a computer. So, um, then, then it's pretty right on. So, let's play, uh, let's go back to impressions in a second. Any day now. Thank you. 
stuff. I think it sounds good. It does sound good, yeah. Plays good. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, greetings, Mark Wilkinson, and then Hugo from the UK. Cool. I'm just finishing up your bebop soloing package. Oh, wow. That's a lot of work, man. That's a lot of work. Good for you. That's cool. Playing along on my Eastman T-59, Hugo. Wow, cool. All right, so, um, hey, Wes, go over to Reverb a second. Okay. Talking about this um, Eastman guitars. I think, is it this one? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so, okay, that that's the... Oh, come on, picture. There you go. Yeah. How these pictures are so terrible. that that's an older one, and it's an it's in a decent shape. It's eh, it's got a few kind of big stuff. So, so. but here's what. Uh, can you go down to the description? Uh yeah. Let's see. Okay, so can you read that? Uh, yeah, classic six oh five C. It's got. It, I don't know. It's oh, just, listen to the incomparable Rich Severson. Play Corcovado on this instrument model in the linked video to right. hear the tone of the floating pickup. So, so go up to 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 now the there you go. Oh, nice. So now I'm advertising for guitars now here. Yeah, interesting. I guess it this this was on the Eastman website or oh, so, wow. a long time ago. I'm I'm not really sure. Oh, that seems that seems that's kind of cool. Should the sound be coming out? Oh, I gotta unmute it here or do it. Uh, uh, it should be. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. Which that's troubling because I need the sound for my guitar <laughs> news segment. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, there I am. Gosh, I'm young. Okay, see that guitar? They 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 put uh, those finger inlays uh, on the fretboard for me. <laughs> they put these really big dots, you know, because I asked, said I gotta have some inlays so people can see what I'm doing. So, you know, but you these know, the pictures could not be worse. I mean, they're terrible on this. this yeah, this I know. Yeah, yeah, listing. I know. Yeah. Have you ever heard Montgomery Land Funk guitar solo by West? I do not know why people don't know that solo. It's one of West's best. I'll have to look it up. I, I don't recall hearing about it. Okay, um anyway. Well, Wes, you want you got some news? Uh I do have some news. Um yeah. Wes me. has news. You want me to do a song while you look up the news? No, I'm good. Um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, we got some funny stuff. Uh, or the first one's funny. Okay, let me uh, let me get organized here. Um, all right, so yeah, here we go. News, news right here. So I mean, we live in the U.S., right? There's yes. protests all the time. Especially nowadays, it's just everyone goes to protest whatever they need to protest. But there's this one guy who uh, has taken taken um, protest to a whole different level. And uh, here he is right here. Uh, this is Steve Lukather, Guitar World, reporting on this. He was so upset over his service at Western Dental that he decided to take his Ibanez guitar, his Fender amp, and set up shop right outside the dentist's office to, pro uh, to protest their, their, crappy, their crappy care. <laughs> and uh, you can see the sign here, uh, Western Dental Sucks. 
Uh, so the, the video of it went went viral, which is why this is making news. So we'll play this uh, for you real quick here. Hopefully you can hear it. the sign and still hold that solo there I really appreciated that so what the deal is is he's upset at Western Dental because he says when you, when you go in there to to get work done they they like make you almost make you give them a good review on Google before you actually get the work done so he says that uh oh. he felt duped he says um because he 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 gave him a good good review so they made uh. him give him a good review and now he's like dude their care is terrible he says their care was a nightmare for him and his son and uh hmm. so he's just protesting that their their practices are are a little shady when it comes to their reviews he said he looked online before and and there was a bunch of good reviews of course and then he went there and he was like dude this place is terrible like why do you have so many good reviews so he's you know he's kind of saying i don't always believe the reviews out there so i was thinking like the only way he could have made this this protest even more of a protest is if he would have played jazz out there because no one likes jazz <laughs> you know <laughs> Everyone loves rock and roll, so I'm sure he got some fans out of it. We may get a jazz player out there, and people would really take notice. I'm sure. Um, that's sick. So anyway, yeah, that that story went viral. Uh, poor guy. Anyway, props to him though for you know kind of standing up for what's right. All right, next on the uh, thing, you know, we're always talking about these auctions all the time. Right. These memorabilia auctions. Well, I got another one for you. Uh, oh no. Whoops. Here you go. This is, you remember Rush? You know, sure. the song Tom Sawyer. So the, the guitar player, Alex Lifeson, is auctioning off uh, a ton of stuff. Guitar.com reports uh, he's working with Julian's Auctions, putting up over 100 items mm -hmm. starting May 20th. 60 vintage guitars and a bunch of other musical gear, but 60 vintage guitars. I mean, that's quite a bit of guitars. Uh, anyway, like the most notable one, and these are not gonna be cheap. This is the most notable one, 1976 G uh, Gibson ES355TD. Mm -hmm. He calls it Whitey. It was uh, custom built just for him in Kalamazoo, um, used on several albums. Uh, mm -hmm. Guess what the conservative bidding estimate for this thing is? Uh, hundred thousand between two hundred and three hundred thousand. Jeez. So there you go. I mean, if you got some extra money uh, lying around, that you could choose either a house or this. Uh, anyway, this is the other notable one. This is a custom nineteen eighty Hentor Sportscaster, not like like the play by play Sportscaster. Like, yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, this one estimated value between one hundred and two hundred thousand uh, dollars, but this is the well, this next one is the one I thought was interesting. This guitar right here, oh yeah, I it's it's that. actually a nineteen eighty one Gibson Howard Roberts Fusion Electric, uh huh, uh, which yeah. uh, it's got some extra something going on under that between the tailpiece and the bridge. This little thing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was, but he's this thing he's used forever. He mm -hmm. took it on tour. He's played it on tours from 1981 to uh, 2007. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I just never knew that Howard Roberts had his name on this this sort of thing. Oh yeah, that was the la the Howard Roberts Fusion. Right. Uh, you ever played one? Yes, I have, and uh, I, I, it was okay. I have a funny story about that. Uh, I played with Jay Roberts at uh, the Quilter amp booth with, uh, you know, with him. And uh, 
uh, I plug my guitar in, my uh, Heritage 575, and he plugged his Fusion in, and he kept saying, why does my guitar, why does your guitar sound so much better than mine? And <laughs> I don't know. It did. It sucked. It had a terrible sound. I, I, I don't know. He finally got it adjusted. Those guitars don't exactly knock me out. So anyway, there you have it. I mean, it looks like the, is the, what is is the body big? Is that like no? A, no it looks like a Les Paul it's like like a, size. It's like a 15 inch, I think. Right. 16 inch, 335 with a cutout. Uh, or one, one, yeah, one sharp cutout. Anyway, uh, so one thing that's really unclear about this story, though, with Alex Lifeson from Rush, is why is he getting rid of all this stuff? I mean, he's like liquidating his right. whole inventory. So it's like, you just wonder kind of what's going on there. Maybe some financial trouble. Is he retiring? Uh, high gas prices, maybe? <laughs> that, that could be it. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely uh, kind, of a, kind of an interesting story because that's a lot. I mean, I can't imagine he has much more than that like lying around, especially if he's selling all his kind of his best stuff. Well, Keith Richards has 2,000 guitars, so, you know, yeah. yeah, he's got nothing. But uh, but yeah, anyway, so that's uh, there you go. If you guys, if you have you know a few hundred thousand dollars laying around and you're a big Rush fan, it's perfect for you. Uh, <laughs> so and then I got one more story here. Uh, do you guys know celebrity chef Alton Brown? You guys know who that is? Um, so he's a Food Network guy. Here he is. Oh, yeah. Um, he's a familiar face, uh, famous for shows like Good Eats and Iron Chef America. Well, he spoke to SF Gate, and, and uh, he says that... Um, oh, he's playing the 13th chord there. Says learning guitar will make you cook better. He'll make, make you a better cook. Really? Wow. Uh, and it, isn't that kind of, that's kind of a strange comparison. But he thinks that the two things are, are very, very connected. He says he fairly recently started playing guitar, 2011, and that it completely changed his life. He says the pandemic added proof to the connection between cooking and guitars because guitar and music sales uh, music gear sales went through the roof once the pandemic started and mm -hmm. same thing happened with all these kind of niche little cooking appliances right. you know things like food processors and pizza stones people were, were you know they were selling like right. hotcakes obviously because everyone's at home no pun intended but uh, he says uh, but he he goes on and on about all these different other comparisons between the two like he says uh, there are only three things that every person on earth wants to do in a group. Uh, they want to laugh together, they want to eat together, and they want to play music together. Interesting. And uh, he said not, he, he emphasized play music, not just listen to music, but but you got to, everyone wants to play music with another right. person. Um, and he makes some other interesting points like, okay, they both involve skill that must be acquired they both have structural forms that need to be learned, though once you learn those forms, you can riff on them as long as you respect the form. So he says, oh, a recipe is a lot like a musical key. Says you riff or write music in that key, the same way you develop your own versions of your favorite meals, You're, they're tailored to your own preferences, which is, I mean, it's pretty true. Um, Cooking and music, playing music, um, or music in general, uh, they they impact, they take you to emotional places too. Hmm. So like you know you smell an apple pie and you're like oh I think of my grandma, and or you mm -hmm. hear a song and you're like oh I think of my buddy back in the day. You know, right, so they kind of yeah. take you and transport you to, to uh, to other places. Uh, so he says he kind of started thinking about all this this idea through this this book right here. Um, and it's called uh, Guitar Zero, The Science of Becoming Musical at Any Age. 
Uh, it was written by a neurosurgeon who also plays guitar. Really? And he proved that playing a musical instrument changes, actually changes the wiring in your brain. Um, he says all of a sudden by cooking or playing, new avenues of creativity start opening up in your head. And not just through in music and cooking, but just creativity in general. You start thinking about ways to expand your, your mind. Hmm. Um, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, so um, this is him playing a little thing. We'll, 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 we'll let you hear how he sounds in a second. But he says, uh, finally, I picked up a guitar in 2011, and it completely changed my life. I was coming to a point of create, creative stagnation in my life, and when I got the guitar, everything turned around. Things started opening up, and the more I played, the more creative energy I had so he says, I'm absolutely convinced that it was playing the guitar that that did that for him. Uh, so you can hear him play, and I'm, he's not that not, not that. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I give up. Pretty interesting, though. Yeah. Wow, that is uh, that is interesting. You know, I've always told Gail, I want to learn how to cook. I want to learn how to cook. I wonder why. Maybe I... I don't know. That's interesting. I think that that's that's really fascinating. I'd like to get that book, that Guitar Zero thing. Yeah, yeah. You're, there it is again. Uh, Guitar at Zero. Huh. Yeah, Gary Marcus. Um, that's... Yeah, I bet you it's pretty good when you get the audio version too. Yeah. So anyway, that's well, uh, cool. That's it there for a guitar. Thank you, Wes. Yep. Big round of applause, to Wes. And again, if you like what he does, please send a tip his way. There should be a link somewhere. Make sure you like what what you're doing, or what we're doing. Hey. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of guys are selling off their stuff. Bob Dylan sold all his rights to his music, right? Uh, I think uh, Neil Young did the same thing. Um, right here, David Gilmour sold all his stuff. Well, you know, it's, I don't know. There is that theory that as the, uh, that, uh, the younger generation aren't going to appreciate the instruments or the cars or whatever as much as we did because we didn't grow up with them. They'll have other collectible things like Nintendo games or something, you know, or whatever. But uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, that theory. And it also trans, uh some people think that about rare coins. Believe it or not, uh, coins, when I was growing up, what, my mom was a Cub Scout leader, and we collect, you know, one of the things as a Cub Scout troop did is collect coins, you know, and you put them in the books and all that. And uh, some people are saying that even coins are, will you lose their numismatic value because they didn't grow up collecting. Oh, gotcha. So you're saying that uh, they're getting rid of all their stuff now because they know they could get high dollar for it, and it's probably yeah. going to dwindle, why, why dwindle down. Yeah, yeah, they're betting that that that's going to go down. Obviously, when you sell something, you're betting it's going to it's going to lose value, right? Hmm. If you hang on something, you're betting it's going to it's going to ap appreciate. Or there's also the fact that you enjoy it, you know. So there's that too. Make sense? <laughs> Okay, so one of the tunes that we're going to do at camp is Have You Met Miss Jones? And let's go ahead and play that song because, uh-oh, low battery. I better do it now or forever hold my peace. Come on. start that again. It's got a tough start there.
little tune, isn't it? So it's like uh, the bridge is a kind of a killer, but that's a fun little tune. Fun, fun, fun. Till the daddy took the T-bird away. Hi, Kirby. How you doing there, buddy? Nice to see you. Uh, Buzz, you just saw the link. Okay, good. Well, any other questions before we cut out, you guys? Got any other pressing matters? Don't forget guitar strings. We've been selling a lot of these strings. Uh, I just got a call from Jim Rolfe. I need two more sets. So that's kind of cool. And uh, I hope you like them. Uh, what else have we been... So, oh, those tuners, those those been going really good. Guitar show in Santa Maria in uh, two weeks, uh, the 26th. We're going to be there, and if you're in the vicinity, please on, come on over. Well, Wes, anything else to add? Um, no, no, not really. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, hey, uh, Gail, thanks for working that. And Wes, thank you. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys later. Bye for now. Hey, come back.